Before we start this video, large thank you to Thay, Wayne, Adam, Ladislav, hope I'm pronouncing that right, man, La, Danny, Josh, Ramanak, Frank, Dalif, and Jason for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello, guys, and today we're going to serialize dictionaries. So what is that useful for? Well, I have two items here, and I've just picked one up. Now, unfortunately, if I were to stop the game now and replay it or load the game, these items, obviously, they're going to be there even though I just picked them up. We don't want that. So in order to save this, we need two pieces of information here. We need an ID uniquely uh, listed for each item that's available in the world for a pickup. And we need to save a bool for if that item has been picked up or not. And to do this, we're going to utilize the serialization of a dictionary. Um, again, by the gentleman I listed in the previous video, uh, this information is just a modified version of his tutorial. So if you want to see the original, go check it out there. I listed the link in the first uh, save video. Anyway, let's open up our weapon pickup or item pickup or whichever one you have. I believe I just used weapon because this was the example I used since we only had weapon items in the game at the time. Uh, but this will work for any item that you are picking up. So let's start by creating a header for world item ID. And this is going to be a unique ID for this item spawn in the game world. Each item you place in the world should have its own unique ID. So this is not to be confused with the items ID, but this is basically the interactable ID. So an item pickup is just an interactable object. Once you've interacted with it and you've picked it up, you don't want to be able to pick it up a second time when you reload the scene. Uh, unless you do, of course, in which case this isn't really needed for you, but I'm going to make a serializable field for int. I'm going to call this item pickup ID. All right, so now let's save that. Now let's go into the game here, and in the scene, I'm just going to make the ID of one of these uh, one, and the other one, I'm just going to make two. Um, it's important that they're different, because if you have two items with the same ID, and you pick up one, obviously the other one will then not spawn when you're done. So we want this to basically be disabled if we picked it up. So we need to figure out a way to do that, and let's start by making a new script first, and let's call this uh, serializable dictionary. And as it suggests, this is just going to make it so we can basically save dictionaries. Now, defaultly, you can't save a dictionary, uh, to my knowledge, because it's not one of the, the basic value types. But all a dictionary is really is just two different values. Um, for this, we're going to use the integer value for the items ID and the bool value for if we've looted it or not. So what we're going to do uh, and what the, the kind gentleman in the uh, previous video linked has done, he's come up with a pretty fantastic way to just basically save these dictionaries. Um, and we're going to serialize and deserialize when we save it as just basically uh, a couple different lists. And it will become clear as I type. So let's hear, let's just rename or sorry, let's make this derive from dictionary, not mono behavior. And we're going to make it have a T key and T value. And we're going to do the same thing over here. Uh, and it's going to complain uh, for a second here. Let's make a comma and then let's say I serialization callback receiver. And now if you want to go above here now, let's make this system dot serializable. And it's going to complain because we don't have two functions here. So let's make these two functions real quick. The first one is public void on before serialization. I'm going to make a comment as to what these two do, but for now, let's just type them out. And the second one is public void on after deserialization. Okay, so what do these do? Well, I'm going to make a note above here. First, I'm going to make a field, serializable field for a private list of T keys. And then I'm going to say keys equals new list T keys. So let's just initialize that right away. And then I'm going to make a, another private list for T values. So you can see your dictionary is just made up of keys and values. So we're basically breaking it down to its smaller parts here and kind of saving them individually and then combining them back when we need to. So this one's first one here is called right before serialization. And basically it's going to save the dictionary to lists individually. An apology to my explanation is not up to par here. I've actually just recently learned this is uh, um, or this method of doing it. I'm a big fan of it though, I have to say. So start off by clearing the keys and values. And then we're going to say for each 
key value pair. So we need to get a pair here. Uh, and then we're going to say right here where the item is T key. Oh, that just erased. Did not mean for that to happen. And T value. Let me just retype that over here. There we go. Okay. And now we're not going to say in collection. We're actually going to say pair in this. As in this script right here. So we're going to say keys.add pair.key. And we're going to say values.add pair.value. Okay. So down below here now on this next function, we're going to make a comment. And this is called right after serialization. So then we're going to make a comment saying loads the dictionary from the lists. So let's say clear, or you can say this clear if that's more clear to you. Then we're going to say if keys dot count for some reason does not equal the amount of values dot count, then you know you have a problem. So I'm just going to throw a debug log dot error. This should never be the case. Um, I'm just going to say something here where I know I've made a mistake. Uh, if you want, you can list the values of each, but I'm just going to say, uh, bro, we tried to deserialize the dictionary. The amount of keys does not match the amount of values. Okay. Uh, now, if this is not the case, then we're going to say, whoop, not for each. We just need a for loop here. So we're going to say for and not length. We're actually going to say as long as keys dot count. We're going to say add keys I values I. And there we go. We have it back into a dictionary. So that's all there is to it, really. Uh, and if that's confusing, um, I'm sure it will make sense. You can take a glance back at it, but I'll just show you it in functionality to show you what I mean and how simple it is, really. So if we go to our character, save that here now, we can basically reference the scripts for each set of values we want to save. So for example, as I said before, items in the world are two things. They are the unique spawn ID, and then they are the status of if they've been looted. So now with our new serializable dictionary, we can just say, uh, this is now a type serializable dictionary and then we can pass our key and value so i want integer for the key and the bool is the value if it's been looted or not key being the item key itself call this items in world so i'll make a comment here so this is very clear again um, the int is the world items unique id and the bool is the status of if this item has been looted or not okay and now let's actually just make a uh, public character save data here. And let's just initialize this right away. So we try to use this. This is just initialized as a new dictionary. So a new serialized dictionary uh, int and bool. Okay, so now let's save that. Now let's go over to the weapon pickup. We can do a few things. We have our pickup item. This is all fine. And we have our interact and this is all fine too. Um, so what I am going to do here now is make a comment here. So this is clear places the item in the player's inventory. But now we need a way to basically check if this item has been added to the list of items we've looted or not. And this is very straightforward. Let's make, let's make a comment first saying save the item um, or rather not save the item. That's a bad way of phrasing it. We'll say notify the character data that the item has been looted because saving the item is more like saving it to your inventory, which is a little bit different. So we need to know if this has already been taken out of the world. Uh, and if it has, we don't want to spawn that again. Well, how are we going to enable or disable the item spawning? That's very simple. We can make another header uh, called item information. And you know what? This can just be the header actually for the item pickup ID too. So we can just copy this header and replace world item ID with item information. And then we're going to add a serializable bool just so we can see it in the inspector has been looted. Okay. And this is going to be checked on awake or start. Um, let's go to interactable. I don't have an awake or start method here, but I'm going to make one. Why am I doing this? Because in the future, if I want to change every single interactable, like for example, if I want to save the game every time you interact, then I'm going to use the base awake and start and just basically override it, but still call the base method. So basically whatever I make on the original awake and start can still stay if I say override awake and then 
keep base dot awake. This makes it so if you change the awake method on the base interactable, it will apply for every if you wanted to. Um, I recommend doing so. So we're going to say if has been looted, game object dot set active is equal to false. Um, but now we're not actually saving this yet. So let's do that first. We're going to say if world save manager dot instance uh, dot current character save data dot items in world dot contains and then we're going to pass the item pickup ID. So if we do contain this item in our save data, let's remove that. And then let's re add it with the new value of it's been looted. So that means true. So we're going to first by saying remove this item. And then we're going to say world save game manager dot instance dot current character save data dot items in world dot add. And then we're going to add it by our ID. And then we're going to add true as in this item has been looted. And now we should actually put this above the pickup item now that I'm thinking about it because I believe when we pick up the item, we actually destroy uh, the game object from the scene. So I'm just going to say saves the pickup to our save data. So it does not spawn again when we reload the area. And as I stated, um, I'm going to come down here to first actually and say has been looted is equal to true. And yeah, that looks good. And I'm going to copy all this and put it just above the pickup item function. All right, cool. So we're still not actually checking if this has been looted before we start or not. So let's do that right now. We are first going to check and see if we have this in the world save manager. We're going to say, uh, actually, first we're going to say has been looted is equal to world save game manager dot instance dot current character uh, save data dot items in world. And we're going to pass the item ID. Um, we're not checking this first though, because above that, we're going to make sure we have this item even in the save data or it's going to give us an error. So if we don't have this item in the save data already, if it's not present, then we know it has not been looted. So we're going to say if we don't have this item or if the list does not or the dictionary does not contain this, this item, then we know there's no way it's been looted because it's not there. So we're going to add it and we're going to set the loot status to false. Because if it's not there, we could not have looted it. So then we're gonna make a note saying if the save data does not contain this item, we know it must not be looted because you can see down there in our interact function, the first thing we do is check to see if it's there and then we remove it and we re add it with the true functionality. So if it is there, then it has been looted. And then we can move on to our code has been looted is equal to, and then that will be, uh, that will change our, our bool up here to disabled or true, sorry, rather. And if it has been looted, then we disable the game object next. All right, so that does look good and this should work as is. So I'm gonna say that actually what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to come over here in the scene, make sure these have different IDs um, and I'm going to probably get an error. Yes, I am because we should move this to uh, start, not awake. That would be much better because it's not going to be able to get the information it needs if it's called and the same runtime as everything else being initialized like the save states and such. So let's just make an override start method and move all of this from awake to start. And this should work just fine. So now if I save this and go back into the game and I press play, uh, I'm going to check these real quick to make sure this is two and this is one. Yes. Okay. We're good to go. Now, if I start right now and pick up, I'm going to pick up the item ID one here on the left, and then I'm going to save the game. Where is my world save game manager? All right, it's probably under do, don't destroy on load. Yes, it must be. Okay, yeah, it's right here. So I'm going to save the game now, and then I'm going to load the game. And you're going to see that that item should not spawn if I've done this correctly. So let's hit load game. And yes, it is gone. There's one remaining, just the number two. So just to go to the scene here, I'll show you. You can see it's still there, but it actually disabled itself. And the has been looted box is true. So this works exactly as intended. Uh, what happens, however, if you give the items the same IDs? So I'm going to stop the game here now. And I'm going to give them both the ID of one, which we've saved to our character. And it has been looted, obviously. And I'm going to start the game and load the character data uh, that we just saved. You can see here, none of them spawn. So that's why you have to give every single item its unique ID. Otherwise, you're one of these issues. So guys, there you go. That's how you save items in your world and things that you've looted. And this can work for a lot of things. So just stay with me for a sec while I explain this. But if you made it this far, you know, please go ahead and drop a like, leave a comment because it really does help in my series a whole lot. And I appreciate uh, those of you who take the time to do it. Also, a special thank you to my patrons is because you get to keep doing this. And I really appreciate uh, your support. So 
what else can you use this for? Um, now I can cover this in a video if you guys want. If you want to see it, please let me know in the comments because the functionality is the same. And if you don't need to see it, I can move on to something else because I'm doing these videos not to hand you a full project, but to give you the information to make a project yourself. So let's take bosses, for example, okay? So in Dark Souls, uh, a boss has a couple things going on. As you know, if you first enter the boss room, sometimes you have to do something to wake them up. But if you wake up the boss uh, and die to it and come back, it's already awake. So you can use the same logic to save if you've woken up a boss or not, or if you've defeated a boss or not. You would take the boss's ID, it's a unique character ID, and then you would, uh, if you've defeated the boss, you would save it using a dictionary with the ID and a bool for if it has been defeated. And if it has been defeated, you would not enable the game object at the start of the scene. The same can be true for, say, a boss being woken up. If the boss has already been uh, awoken, then you would not, say, play a certain animation when you enter the arena. And so the boss is just there ready to fight. So you can see this carries into a lot of things. And one final example, and again, I can show all of these if you guys want. Just please comment because it's just the same thing. And if you're all comfortable with it, I won't reshow the same logic. Uh, but the last example I can give is saving objects with a quantity. So if you want to save consumables, for example, you would use an integer or a string for the item's ID, and then an integer for the amount you are saving to the inventory. So dictionaries are very powerful in this sense, and you can really save pretty much anything. Um, but yeah, I hope that's very clear. And uh, again, a shout out to the gentleman who listened in the previous video for sharing this knowledge. Uh, very cool. And I will see you guys in the next video.